Hey, so uh, I just recorded about a 30 minute video recover, re reviewing this slide. Now, um, I made a few mistakes, well, I made a few mistakes, I always do, but uh, it went a lot longer than I expected. I thought it'd be five to 10 minutes. But when I was doing so, um, I realized that I, I had missed an opportunity and I thought it was okay to leave some of these little uh, uh, labels for various distances and measurements. And I skipped out on that thinking it would be okay, but after doing the video, I really feel like it was necessary. So I went ahead and added them. The, the labels I'm talking about are the labels on the right. I had a, few, a couple of them, but most of them were not there. In fact, there's one off the screen. There you go, DD. Um, so this should hopefully help. This will be the slide I will actually, uh, I'm not gonna re-record the video because it's way too re long to record. But I will, on Instagram, I'll include the video and the image. Um, actually, you know what? And Instagram is gonna have to be on my channel. I don't know if I can link a picture as well. But on Facebook, you will find, um, probably in the comments because Facebook does not allow a page, a professional page to include a video and a photo. It's just either multiple photos or one video. Uh, so anyway, and look in the comments, you'll find this slide if you wanna download it and take a look at it um, and uh, or to use it for your reference or whatever, but that's about it. So anyway, just wanna quickly add this video. I'm gonna link this to the beginning of the video so to give some explanation for why the primary video does not have the exact same image. It's pretty darn close, but um, all right, there you go. Thanks so much. Hey everyone, Dr. Baron Grutter here. Uh, I want to make a quick video talking about a slide I posted uh, on Instagram and Facebook just, uh, I think it was yesterday morning. Uh, so this is not the exact same slide. I have updated it um, literally probably, I don't know, 25, 30 times, basically making small adjustments here and there. Um, trying to get as much content as I could in as organized a manner as I possibly could. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. Will people message me with all sorts of corrections that they would make? Probably. <laughs> um, so, but it is what it is. And so at some point, I just wanted to go ahead and get a video out there. So uh, a couple little note-taking points. First of all, somebody was going to ask me, well, hey, what was the app you were using the, to draw on the, the slide and whatnot? Well, I'm using an app called um, PixArt, P-I-C-S-A-R-T. It's a free app. Uh, I have the paid version because it has some extra tools in it that I really like, but the free app itself is pretty awesome. Uh, it, that's what I do all my smile design with, um, making collages, annotation of photos, and whatnot. I even use it for some video editing and mainly just cropping down videos, like trimming them for length and cropping the size. But anyway, that's so people are going to ask. I just want to throw that out there. Um, also, why am I even making this video? Well, I had a question. Someone had a question for me, asked me, hey, uh, how do I use this specific drill that I have? How do I use it for um, guided surgery in Blue Sky Plant? How can I plan uh, according to these drills that aren't in the software? And so I, I sent a picture, uh, uh, sort of a lot of the, the words are on here and uh, a couple pictures, but about a half of what's on this slide and sent it to him. I'm hoping it helped him, but uh, that was, you know, that's what I did. So anyway, um, but after that, I kind of got thinking about it. I thought there's, there's more to it. There's definitely a lot more information I could be sharing. So first of all, uh, this is this is what I came up with. And also, I you know I teach occasionally. I actually have a course coming up on guided surgery and digital ortho in, in a few, couple weeks. And I thought, well, maybe it's, might as well just go ahead and turn this into like a legit slide with a lot of content. Maybe too much content, but um, yeah. And as I joked in my other um, my post, is it's sort of a lecture in a single slide. So a couple things um, uh, about this is, that first of all, why am I even recording myself? I don't usually do that. But because it's one slide, I'm not going to be transitioning. There's no video really to it. I felt like something has to be moving. So I guess it'll be me. Uh, once in a while, I'll draw on the slide to, you know, to connect the dots for you. Uh, I'm going to go into some sort of expanded content at the end of the video that is not in the actual slide. Um, honestly, talking about how to use drills that are guided or could be guided, um, and then also how to use drill stops. That's sort of a, a, a next level of complexity. So I didn't honestly have room in the slide, and it's not that imperative for the most part. So that'll be at the end of the video. You, if you wanna keep watching, great. If you want to um, stop, I'll talk, kind of give you a heads up when I get to that point. So um, anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So this, this slide is talking about how to take this drill that we have in this um, 
in this uh, image here, sticking out of the handpiece, how do we use that in the Blue Sky Plan software? So first of all, the software, if you notice at the very top, I'm gonna go ahead and change so I can actually draw on the screen for a minute here. Go to draw, and let's pick a different color. Let's just go with red, I guess, and make sure I'm not, yeah, it's probably small enough. Okay, so what's big, most important are these two numbers here. GTD, which is guide tube diameter, and GTO, guide tube offset, okay? You can see the numbers over here, GTD, uh, guide tube diameter, is the diameter of this uh, gold or orangish tube. Now, in the, I have it gold or orangish because in the software, that's what it looks like, okay? Um, that is basically when you print or mill your guide, there's going to be a hole in it. The outside diameter is pretty much irrelevant of it. What is important is the measurement right in here, okay? So we are telling the software what that diameter is, okay? Because anything that gets placed into the guide, whether it be a metal sleeve like this, or the drill is gonna to have to go through there. So what is the diameter of that hole? So we need to tell the software the diameter. We also need to tell it the offset. And the offset is the distance is right here, the distance from the top of the platform to the top of the guide tube, okay? The software needs to know those two things. There's another one called guide tube length, but that's just is how long this tube is. The default, I believe in the software is four millimeters. Just leave it there. You can go longer, you can go shorter. I wouldn't go shorter, but longer isn't gonna matter much. Just leave it. That's why I'm only focusing on these two, two numbers. This is the only two that truly matter. To clean up my image, I'm gonna hit undo a little bit. Just, okay, I can always go back and delete some of these. Okay, so um, we gotta figure out how are we determine these two numbers, okay? So a couple of known variables or variables you're going to determine is the drill diameter, okay? So how wide this drill is, the drill length. And what we're talking about drill length, we mean from here to here, okay? So it is from the bottom, the end of the drill to the, whatever is going to stop the drill from penetrating further, okay? Sometimes that will be a physical stop built into the drill. In my image, it is the actual handpiece, okay? So the length of the drill is from the tip of the drill to whatever stops it, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and just click, well, I'll leave that, I can always undo later. So that's drill length. Implant length, well, I think you all know what that is, that's just the length of the, the implant. So now, once you, you can know these, when you can determine the drill, the drill diameter is pretty obvious, it should be written on it. The drill length, your best bet is to insert it in your handpiece and take a digital caliper and just measure that distance. A lot of times, kits will have the same length for every drill. The handpiece is a variable, okay? Some handpieces allow different depth of penetration of the shank of the drill. So you want to measure it for any handpiece you're gonna use. If you have multiple handpieces, you need to measure all of them. You need to figure out which one you're gonna use for surgery. Ideally, use this, you know, have multiple of the same attachments if you're gonna have multiple, um, or just have one as your standard handpiece. Anyway, not a big deal, um, but that's that's something to know. Okay, so those those are all determined now. Down here, we have the drill sleeve, okay? This is the, the metal sleeve gets inserted. That's this gray thing right here, okay? The, the metal sleeve is inserted into the hole that is that is in the guide uh, the, the guide itself. So we need to know the dimensions of that. Now, I'll come back to the fact, well, what if I'm not using the metal sleeve? I'll come back to that, don't worry. But for now, assume you're using one of these metal sleeves. This metal sleeve allows the drill to slide through it and it's metal to metal contact so you're not worrying about the drill chewing up the plastic resin guide. Okay, so metal to metal contact, this sleeve has to be inserted into it. So it's important to know various dimensions of it. So let me go ahead and just click back a little bit so I can um, see a little better. Oops, not trying to. Yep, so recording, sorry, I wanna make sure I didn't hit pause on the recording. Okay, so um, just hitting back a few times to clear up. Oh, good enough. Okay, um, so the guide tube right here, the drill sleeve, I'm sorry, drill sleeves, they're called guide tubes. That's an, an unfortunate 
challenge. When you buy them, at least on a lot of websites, Blue Sky Bio for one, they're called guide tubes. Do not let the metal guide tube and the digital virtual guide tube confuse you. They are two separate things. And you're always going to have a larger digital guide tube than the physical metal sleeve because the metal sleeve has to slide inside of it. So anyway, you have a drill sleeve, which is this whole metal body. The drill collar height is the height of this little collar right here at the top. If you look closely, I'll try and zoom in here for a second. You can see that this part from here to here is wider than from here to here, okay? It's got a larger diameter. That's so that as you insert the sleeve into the hole of the guide, it doesn't just drop right through, okay? It's sort of a depth limiter. It stops it. So that's the collar. That's, uh, that has a specific height, as you can see right here, okay? It sets above the guide tube, what, uh, of, sets above the guide itself. So that height is important because that's going to limit depth of penetration of your drill. So that is important, that's the drill sleeve collar height. Now you also have the internal diameter, the ID, which is the, dental, the drill sleeve inner diameter. So that's from here to here, the inside of it. And then you have the outer diameter, which is from here to here. The difference is the inner diameter is what the drill goes inside, okay? How the drill fits the inner diameter is important. The outer diameter is how this gets slid in here in the printed hole, okay? So you have an inner diameter, which houses the drill. The outer diameter is how it is housed within the guide. So let's figure out how do we find out those numbers. First of all, when you buy a guide tube, it's going to have those two numbers determined for you. Or if you were to buy a kit and it comes with sleeves, you can always measure those to determine them yourself. But now we have these drills and we don't have sleeves because we just have these cylindrical drills. Let me make me note that. Um, I'm just gonna actually delete real quick. All right. So. Let me go back. Okay. So the one thing that's very important to note is these this drill is cylindrical. Okay. It's not tapered. If it's tapered, it's not going to engage the um, the drill sleeve uh, all the way. So it's very important that your drills that you choose are cylindrical. That they are either cylindrical as themselves uh, themselves or that they have a guided cylindrical portion up here. Okay. Some drills have that. All, pretty much all guided drills have a cylindrical, non-cutting non portion of the drill, okay? And that has to fit within the drill. So that's what's important. That diameter um, is going to be the, uh, is, going to, is going to slide within this drill sleeve. So the drill sleeve is picked according to the inner diameter, meaning we have to find one that has the inner diameter we need. And how do we know what inner diameter we need? Well, Inner diameter equals drill diameter. So the, the diameter of whatever part is being guided, This, if it's all uniform, then that diameter. If there's a guided portion, then that diameter. Whatever part is going to engage the sleeve, that's what's important, the drill diameter, plus about 0.1 millimeter. Why do we need 0.1 millimeter? Well, we can't have exact same size because you'll never be able to get the drill in. It's so tight that it just will you won't have passivity. It won't be able to slide up and down. A perfect world, I would like it to be maybe closer to 0 0.05, but sometimes that the tolerance built into the sleeve might not allow for it to actually, it still might be a little too tight. So anyway, you, you might have to you know uh, work, work around with that, but in general, if you go with 0.1, it's going to be tight enough. Just be aware that the, mo the looser it is, the more wag of your drill, okay? And I have another, uh, on my uh, Facebook and Instagram, I have another, um, post that talks about drill wag and just talks about how the, 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 the greater the tolerance, I mean, the greater the gap, the more the drill will wag around. And so the, where the drill reaches its final spot may, will deviate. So you don't want to have a lot of wag, but I think that 0.1 millimeters is safe. So we pick that inner diameter as drill diameter plus about 0.1. So if this drill, let's delete again. So if this drill, let's just say it's 3.6 millimeters, okay? Well, then we want to have 3.6 plus 0 0.1. So we get 
3.7. We want the inner diameter to be 3.7. Okay, that's just a hypothetical. The outer diameter is manufacturer determined. And what I mean by that is when you find a sleeve that has a 3.7, it should you should just find out okay what is the outer diameter of that sleeve it doesn't matter to you you just need to know so you can tell the software but let's just say it's 5.0 now be aware the wider that number the harder it is to fit in an edentula space 5.0 is going to fit in most places but a lower incisor it might not an upper lateral it might not so the narrower you can get that the better but in general 5.0 is a pretty good is a good you know middle point standard um, and and the narrower it gets, then the, the narrower the sleeve itself gets. So they can't go so small. You can't have a 3.7 and a 4.0 because that would be 0.3 shared upon two sides, which means 0.15 thick. It gets pretty flimsy. So that's why you're going to struggle to find, um, I mean, I guess that might actually work. But anyway, it's, it's pretty thin. So 5.0 in this, in this scenario, we'll just say that it's 5.0. So we have determined a few different numbers. And it, it, be aware, this whole presentation so far has really focused on getting you to this one point. Determine your drill diameter, add 0.1, and now you know 3.7. Once you know that, you find your guide tube and you figure out what this is, the 5.0. The product will tell you it's 5.0. You are now ready to tell the software a value based on that, which is guide tube diameter. How big does this hole need to be to house that sleeve? Well, once again, we need passivity. We need to be able to get it in and out. We don't want it to be too passive, but based on printing and precision of printing, I once again will go with 0.1 millimeters. Your printer may vary. You might want to try 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.15, 0 0.2, 0 0.25. Try multiple until you find the right number. When you find a number that is good, that allows your sleeve to fit in there, just remember that, write it down somewhere. You don't have to do it multiple times for every, every single guide, but your first one, when you're dialing things in, just print a few of them. Each guide costs about two bucks. So if you print three or four of them, okay, you spent six or eight dollars, but you've got a chance to figure out where that tolerance is best fit, okay? So anyway, now you've got it. You know that it's, um, we know that it's 5.0, plus 0 0.1 equals 5.1. So in the software, the GTD is going to be 5.1. That's probably a bad place to put that just because it's, it's too much behind it. Five, oh, I'm an eraser. 5.1 is the GTD. And the last thing we need to know is what is the GTO, the offset, okay? So let me delete a little bit down here so we can see this a little better. So now we have the GTO, the guide tube offset. This is simply the, guide, uh, the drill length, which we said uh, is from here to here, uh, here to here, minus the implant length here to here, minus the collar height, this part right here. So the offset is from here to here. Does that make sense? I'm, I'm asking a question you can't answer. Hopefully that makes sense. The thing that is commonly forgot, it's easy to say the guide tube offset is the drill length minus the implant length. Then you're done. You think, okay, it's great. If you don't remember that collar height that it plays in, what's gonna happen is your drill is gonna get stopped prematurely by whatever height that is. Quite often, that is one millimeter. So you're gonna be one millimeter shallow of what you had anticipated because that collar is holding you up. That's safe, at least you didn't go a millimeter too deep, but if you don't, you're still gonna, your, your implant's not going to be as deep as you planned for it to be. So it's important to recall that or to include that. Um, sorry about that. Um, so now we need to subtract that as well. So we're, in this case, I'm just going to say we've got a 20, mil, 20 millimeter, sorry, 20 millimeter drill. We've got an eight millimeter implant and we've got a one millimeter collar. Okay. So 20 minus eight minus one equals 11. 
So my GTO, my guide tube offset is 11.0. So in this scenario, I've now determined everything I need to know, the software, I just need to put in those two numbers, okay? I'm trying to think if there's anything I haven't covered. I'm going to cover more stuff, as I said, but I think I've pretty much covered it all. Um, it sounds like a lot of information, but that's why I'm making a video so I can explain the, uh, you know, what's going on. The slide itself, which if I'm going to go ahead and include this online as well, you don't need this video to understand, you know, to understand it necessarily or to, to follow the instructions, but the video is to help explain why, what all this information is giving you. Okay. So, um, before I upload it, I'm going to go ahead and add a schematic that shows the DL, um, next to the drill. Um, so this, uh, I had it on my first rendering and then I removed it thinking it wasn't necessary, but after making this video, I think it is. So from here to here, D L and then from here to here, D D so drill diameter. Anyway, I'm going to make sure that's more obvious on the, on the screen, but, um, yeah, I, I, I don't want to add a bunch more things talking about the specs of this sleeve, but hopefully that's understandable. Okay, so I think I've covered everything. Now, here's where I'm going to talk about, well, what if you don't want to use a guide tube? Okay, so let me erase everything for a second here. All right. Oh, and by the way, um, I should have mentioned this. I'm also using AZ Screen Recorder, which is a... Uh, a free app. I again use the paid version, um, but uh, it's an app allows me to record my screen and record me. Okay, so now what if you aren't going to use a sleeve? Okay, nix that. Um, we aren't going to have this sitting inside of here. We're just going to go straight drill to the guide. Now you have to be careful because if you're going to do that, you need a drill that has a portion that is wider and is smooth, it is non-end cutting. Again, mo I think I said earlier, most guided drills are that way. Right? They don't cut on this portion. You don't want the, the, the cutting flutes to engage your resin guide and introduce shavings into your implant or into your osteotomy. But if you have this wider portion, now you can determine everything directly, okay? Your length is gonna change, is gonna be the same, and your collar height, in that case, your offset, is zero because there is no collar. So it doesn't really change the equation. It just means that there is no collar height. Okay. The, the, the next thing is their guide tube diameter. Well, how wide do you need to make it? Well, there is no, um, outer diameter of a guide tube. There is simply the implant diameter. So instead of an OD, it's ID implant diameter plus that because the outer diameter is your drill. There is no longer a sleeve that gets in the way. So you need an implant diameter, or sorry, uh, I, uh, I'm sorry. It's DD, drill diameter. Drill diameter plus 0.1 millimeters. So you take this diameter, add 0.1, and there you go. The most common size for this guided portion is going to be 5.0, just like I mentioned before, or right about that, 4.99 or whatever. So once again, we're going to be using... 5.1 plus 0 0.1 equals 5.1. That's just a common one. Um, the Blue Sky Bios Guided Kit, um, uh, Nobel's, um, I think that uh, Bicons is very close to that. I think it's a little different. I, got, I can't remember offhand, but it's very close. They're all about the same. Um, so, Anyway, be, be aware, well, Bicon has three different sizes or four different sizes now, but anyway, whatever. Um, so that's something to be aware of. If you want to go without a metal sleeve and you have a drill that will support that, then there you go. Blue Sky Bio has their um, depth stop drills, okay? Now, each drill is a different diameter, but there's the drill, there's the stop. Each drill might be wider, mm -hmm. but one has a wider um, not stop well the stop is this part okay the stop limits you from going into the bone but there's a smooth shaft above it that you can use to guide just know that each drill diameter has a different diameter uh, shank that could be used guided so um, and there's other systems that are similar to that so you have to figure out which drill you're using measure the diameter of that and that's what's going to fit in the printed guide so there's how to use going without a tube okay Lastly, 
What if your drill is 30 millimeters long? Let's just do some math here for a second. If your, if your drill is, um, the drill length is 30, your implant length is eight, and your collar height is one, okay? So now you've got 21 millimeter guide tube offset. That means your guide tube is up here. Okay, that's a very long carryover distance for this drill. Okay, it's a very long drill, but that is going to introduce a lot of wag. Okay, because if any sort of passivity allows the drill to be over here or over here. Okay, so that's not great. Plus, inserting that drill is going to be a pain. It's going to be very difficult. Okay, so if you find that to be the case, okay, if you have a super long drill, what you need to do is I'm just going to hit undo so I can clear up my screen a little bit. Is instead keep your GTO, your guide tube offset at around nine or 10 millimeters. So it keeps it around here. Oops, I'm writing eight. So nine or 10, somewhere in there. But you can incorporate a drill stop. Now, a drill stop is part of the guide, but instead of it being a full circle, it is just a semicircle that fits outside of your metal sleeve and all it does is stop your drill, okay? So you have this drill stop that is this semicircle that fits kind of, that allows your drill to kind of slide right in from the side and then you have your actual sleeve right here guiding the drill. So your, your trajectory control is actually happening down here. And that's very important, okay? But your depth, um, your depth control is happening way up here where you need it. So that is where you use a drill stop. Now, ignore the fact that my drill sleeve is the height of the implant. I didn't mean to do that. I was just showing a demonstration of having the sleeve lower down the drill and the, the vertical stop way above where the drill is being guided. Okay, so when you do that, you're going to be using drill stops. The only the difference is, is we had 21 millimeters as our total guide tube offset. Well, if I set it as if I set the actual GTO as nine, I need to have a think about it a GTO equals nine. My total offset should be, we'll just let's see, TO, total offset equals 21. Well, that means that my drill stop, and the drill sleeve, drill stop, has to equal 12. Okay, so this half, the semicircle of printed resin has to be 12 millimeters tall. It's still pretty tall, but it's, it should fit in the mouth fine because, well, it doesn't matter. It should fit fine. And since you can swing your, your, your guide in from the side, it allows you to uh, control your depth closer to the implant, closer to the osteotomy, while bringing your depth stop up higher. So I think that's about it. I had a few questions about, you know, how do I do this instead? How do I do that instead? I hope that that is uh, helpful. Um, I, I'm going to mention one more thing. I, I already mentioned it, but I'm going to circle back to it because it is um, uh, hopefully will make even more sense now. And that is if you're using a set of guided drills, they just happen to not be in the software. Okay. So we're not talking about using our a uh, handpiece as the vertical stop. We now have a drill that has a vertical stop built right here, okay? Or you've printed something or you have a metal metal thing that attaches to your drill. Some actual drills have a little thing that comes down here and will have a little arm that can control depth. So if you have something like this and you have something that will stop your depth, what is your drill length now? Well, that DL is now from here to here. Okay, it is, it is always whatever stops your depth penetration, it's what st stops you from inserting your drill further. I apologize for that obnoxious noise. My blood sugar is probably like 165 right now and that's my glucose monitor. So I apologize, I wish I could turn that off, but and not until I stop recording. Um, but anyway, um, this, this distance is what it is from the tip of the drill to the stop here. One more side point. A lot of people, when they measure, they will measure 
from right here, okay? Not from the tip of the drill. Why is that? Well, technically your drill, your implant's not gonna fit in this little triangle of area, okay? So when they're doing their measurements, they wanna make sure their implant ends up and doesn't get stopped short of their desired depth, which is okay. So long as you know that that extra 0.75 millimeters or whatever isn't gonna hit the nerve, perf the sinus, hit something that you don't that you don't want it to get. Know that you're drilling that extra amount, but it's okay to plan so long as you kind of give yourself a safety area of this much, so that you know that that's you know nothing is closer than this. So anyway, when you measure, I I would actually encourage that so long as you understand what I just said. If you understood what I just said and the warning I just gave, then measure from here. If you did not understand my warning about you know, uh, mentally recognizing you have extra depth of, of drilling, then measure from here. I'd rather you have a shallow implant than a um, hitting uh, something to, uh, by accident. If you place implants no closer than two millimeters from any you know, vital anatomy, then you're fine. You're never gonna matter. If you are the person that places you know, right at the cortical bone of the of the nerve of the eye uh, inferior of the nerve and you like you like to hug it okay then maybe you should measure from the tips so you can be a little more safe but anyway uh okay well i'm gonna go ahead and i think i'm gonna end this video hopefully this made sense um yeah all right thanks for watching and stop recording